I, I'm really glad you brought it up too, because I I was one of those people, I guess a primitivist, or I certainly wouldn't have called myself that at the time. But mm -hmm. again, in this deep rejection of all that is Western, of all that we see around us, and associating it all with this colonial disaster. Um, you know, the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater, and I did it myself for a lot of years, where I just kind of went, well, no, agriculture is somehow more corrupt. And then we have, of course, our primary, you know, ethical story, the Garden of Eden story, pretty much tells us that agriculture is a corrupt state, and we're given it as a punishment. Not only is it not a ritual or a celebration, as it once was, but in our culture, it's seen this other way. And on down the line, it goes, you know, to where people won't even labor anymore because they feel it's so beneath them. Meanwhile, they'll go to the gym and work out for two hours or run around doing nothing for two hours, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that workers could actually be growing their food or something useful. But uh, so, you know, I, th I think... It's, it's such a valid question, and I do want to address it. So, the book, The Story of the Madawaska Forest Garden, the first book I wrote, is really about an indigenous form of agriculture. And in kind of following the sequence and following the understandings that are kind of underlying that process, you get it from that book, and it's very complicated in some ways, but also very simple in other ways. So simple... It, you'll forget it almost immediately, and it sounds so cliche, but indigenous form of agriculture are co-creative by their very nature. They've been done for tens of thousands of years, so they wouldn't have survived if it wasn't a way of working sustainably with the earth, right? We, we can't make that claim. Nobody can make that claim anymore, probably not for the last couple hundred years even, and certainly Organic farmers can't really make that claim because they don't really do traditional organic practices like letting things go fallow and letting the weeds claim back the land for a year or two. You know, nobody does that stuff anymore. These basic, basic agricultural technologies that were part of the cycles for literally tens of thousands of years, they worked. But now it's all been corrupted and industrialized. And so what we see is a horrific version of it and so of course we think it's you know something that's somehow corrupt by its very nature but you know in in my experience these days and living inside the dream here the way it works for me is that agriculture is a ceremony that lasts four months has these very profound, like every ceremony, it has these very, very poignant and profound moments. But a lot of it is also waiting, which is also a big part of ceremony. It's learning how to wait for the right to do things, waiting for the spirit, right? So, you know, in this unfolding, like, these ones, these plants, these corn, the beans, all these ones that I've taken care of for almost 30 years now, they've been part of my family. There's this whole rebirthing every year, and I'm so happy to see their faces in the spring. And then as they grow up, I'm tending to them like you would your own children. Not because you expect anything, but because it feels right and it feels good. And then at the end of the season, right now, you can barely step in my house because <laughs> there's bushels and bushels and bushels and flats and flats and flats and flats of pears and tomato and squash and corn and beans and everything I'm going to live till the next time I get to see their face. And so it's this beautiful, beautiful receiving you know, it's, it doesn't feel at all like taking to me anymore. It's this beautiful, beautiful cycle where I give and I give and I give and then I receive. You know, so I often say this, that maybe you see me in the morning, you know, in the, in the spring, you see me out in the garden and I'm, I'm doing some weeding and I look pretty much like when you're doing the weeding too, right? Mm -hmm. So you're kind of like, 
well, that's just like what I do, same thing, right? Eh? Mm-hmm. But even though a lot of the things I'm doing, and same with the harvest thing, it's like, oh, he's taking at the end of the season. And you, you could see it as the same as anybody's gardening. But over the years, and partially being a forager for a good decade or so before I started learning about agriculture, you know, there was something else I learned in there. And it's, it's that this is a cycle, you know, and so if I'm weeding, it's a sacred act. And when I pull things out of my garden, they're to honor, you know, the gods of the underworld, the gods of death and decay. And I put them in an altar, you know, and some people call that a compost pile. But for me, it's an altar to death and decay. And so it's part of the cycle, right, that I'm feeding the underworld ones so that they will feed me. Mm. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Being square with them. (laughs) 